All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And hopefully, I can finally do a conjugate beam example that is worthy and not always incorrect. But here we've got this cantilever beam uh, that has uh, uh, an EI, an E that's constant. So you can say it's steel or something, right? And the moment of inertia of AB is 8 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth for 4 meters. And, and then it's the moment of inertia of segment BC is 4 times 10 to the 6. And we have this concentrated moment applied at NC. It's fixed at A. And what we'd like to do is calculate the displacement and slope at point C over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply the conjugate beam method for this. And the, the idea or the approach of the conjugate beam method is, is to do your real statics first, or your statics on the real or given beam and come up with a moment diagram, and, and then use EI to determine the curvature diagram. Once you have that, the curvature diagram, it's all about taking the real beam and drawing the conjugate beam and applying the curvature diagram as your loading, as your conjugate loading, and then using statics on the conjugate beam uh, to determine the slope and the deflection right here. And that's the whole point of the conjugate beam method is, is really to, to utilize statics principles to calculate slopes and deflections. And the idea is that if you calculate a shear in the conjugate beam, that corresponds with an actual slope in the real beam. And a moment in the conjugate beam corresponds with a deflection in the real beam. So right, let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing we want to do is apply our static. So one is our basic statics on the real beam. Statics on real right here. And this is simple, you know, calculating reactions here should be pretty straightforward here. So if I sum forces in the vertical, I would get AY is zero. If I sum forces in the horizontal, AX is zero. And my moment here, MA, if I sum moments about a point, is gonna be equal to 500 Newton meters here, okay? So really that one's a no-brainer and hopefully you can see that. The, the next part to do is that moment diagram. And the moment diagram here is also pretty straightforward if I have here, let's see, I've got, let me draw an axis here, like this, and then let's give it some length about up to here, and let's go right about here. And so for my moment diagram here uh, in kilonewton, in newton meters, in newton meters right here, my moment diagram will simply just be constant all the way across, which makes it like so. And these are just 500 Newton meters. And this is my moment diagram. Okay, that's not too bad, hey? And then we want to draw our curvature diagram. And the curvature diagram just simply is uh, dividing each point on the moment diagram by EI of the beam. So here, our curvature diagram which will be M over EI diagram, okay? And so here, let's see, let me draw some lines. Bam, bam, right here. My curvature diagram, if you look at it, let's see, I have a large moment of inertia here compared to segment BC. So, so you would expect your curvature to be less, okay? Because you have more resistance to, to bending here. So here I would have, bam, up to segment, whoa, segment BC here, right there, segment B right there, I have that. And this, this, this right here, this curvature would be uh, 500 Newton meters divided by EI of AB. And then here for segment BC, I would anticipate that here, which it would probably be bigger because the, the curvature is going to be larger because the moment of inertia is less. This is 500 Newton meters divided by EI BC. And this is my curvature diagram for this beam. Okay. All right. There it is. Okay. And now, you know, that's that really is it in terms of statics. And, you know, statics is hard if you need more practice with moments, right? But here, let's go ahead and now the next thing we want to do is draw the conjugate beam. So two, conjugate beam right here. And the thing about drawing a conjugate, this is really the hard part of this problem, is, is making sure you understand how the real boundary conditions translate into conjugate boundary conditions. And so here I have this beam 
and if it's fixed, if it's fixed in the real beam, then it's free in the conjugate beam. And I have a, a video on that, I believe, on how to calculate, you know, the con how to draw a conjugate and a real beam here. And bam, right here. Okay, hopefully that looks relatively straight, although this line is not perfect. And boom. Okay. So here is if you will, I'm going to call this A prime for my conjugate A and my B prime and my C prime. And in my real beam, I'm fixed at A. So my conjugate beam, I'm free. I've got really no support or boundary condition at B. And then at C, it's free in the real beam. Therefore, it is fixed in the conjugate beam right here. Now our loading. Our loading here is if I have a positive curvature here, that load is going to act upwards. Okay, so here is, is one thing that you want to be aware of, and, and a mistake I make all the time here is that if I have a positive curvature diagram or positive moment diagram, then this right here is this right here, my bam, bam, right here is my loading, my conjugate loading is upwards. And this right here is my 500 Newton meter over EI AB. Okay. And then same thing here for segment BC because I have a positive curvature. I want this right here. This is going to be 500 Newton meters over EI BC. And what I need to do is calculate. Now, with my loading here, I want to calculate my shear and my moment at C prime, okay? Now, this isn't necessarily the reaction. What you want to do is treat this like a cut just before the end here, right here. A cut just before the end or just before you reach C prime right here. And so if I, you know, I'm keeping my rules of, of internal loading right here, my positive internal shear if I make a cut and look on the left side, it would be downwards like this, VC prime. And my positive internal moment here would be MC prime, okay? All right, and I'm going to tell you what these positives mean if, if we get positive or negative results, what that means in terms of displacement and our, uh, our uh, what is it, our, uh, our, our slope, okay? And so now using statics, statics on my conjugate beam, so three, so statics on the conjugate beam, I want to determine that VC prime and my MC prime. So here, if I do sum of the forces in the vertical, I'll say this is equal to zero right here. I would get 500 Newton meter over EI AB plus 500 Newton meters over EI BC minus VC prime equals zero. And that tells me that VC prime, whoa, I almost made some big mistakes here. Don't forget the lengths. These are like distributed loads, right? So hopefully some of you were catching me as I made that mistake. This is three meters. So this should be a times four meters here, times three meters here. And that would tell me that VC prime is actually equal to 2,000 Newton meters over EIAB plus 1,500 Newton meters over EIBC. And I did the distances correctly. I used the four and three in the right order right here. And this right here is the same thing as the rotation or the slope at point C in the real beam, okay? All right, and I, I'm gonna tell you in a second what this positive result means, okay? And so here, if I sum moments now about, about point C prime equal to zero, and I'll say this is positive right here, I would get MC prime minus 500 Newton meters over EIAB times four meters, which represents the resultant times the arm, which is three plus two is five meters minus 500 Newton meters over EIBC times three meters times 1.5 meters, which is the arm here 
and that's equal to zero. And that tells me that MC prime is equal to, let's see, to 10,000 Newton meters cubed. And I messed up on units up there. Ah, oh, damn, minus two, right? So here, Newton meter squared up there for slope. Newton meter cubes over here, EIAB plus uh, let's see, five blah blah. That's going to be twenty two fifty Newton meters cubed over EI BC. And this value here is the same as my deflection at C. Okay, my deflection at point C here. Bam. And, and what this means, if, if you know, we want to interpret some stuff, there are things you want to check all the time, or units, right? And so here, you know, I, I noticed that I made that mistake earlier. But the units of EI are um, Newton per millimeter squared times millimeters to the fourth, which gives me Newton millimeter squared. And I can convert this to meters, obviously. But but the units will this just force times length squared, and the units are going to cancel out, and that leaves theta in dimensionless or in units of radians, okay? So th typically this answer is in radians, okay? And then here, this delta C, again, EIAB is Newton meter Q to the, <laughs> Newton meter squared, okay? Force times length squared. So the units of here are gonna be in length. And so in this calculation, the units are gonna end up in meters or length here, okay? And so you get deflection, makes sense, right? Deflection is here. Now, the other thing that you also wanna remember is is what does this positive rotation mean and what does this positive displacement mean okay and i know the simple answer is that positive displacement means it goes upwards well it also depends on how you did your sign convention when you did the moment diagram so here in the moment diagram if you chose positive x going this way and positive v essentially going like this right here then yes you know this positive deflection that's what we initially did right here is that this positive deflection at c means that this movement up here is actually delta C. It's going to move up. And so the deflective shape of this is like this. Okay, here's this. And this, this displacement, if I could erase some stuff here from the elastic curve right here. So this elastic curve, due to that concentrated moment at point C here, there's going to be a deflection upwards delta C. And that positive value indicates this moves upwards. This positive slope, this positive theta, indicates, according to the sign convention that you chose, that this right here is positive theta c. That's this slope right there. I don't know if you can see that. But this, you know, this slope, this rotation right here is that positive theta c. And this, this orientation, that slope right here is a positive slope in our x v coordinate system okay and hopefully that makes sense and that provided some clarity on the conjugate beam method and uh, let me know if you have any questions see ya bye